Uh, hello, this is the second part of the XSI to ZBrush and back again video tutorial for XSI Base. Um, so, what we have here is we've just uh, generated our displacement map. Uh, to look at that, you go to the left hand side of the screen, click on the on your alpha uh, button here, and if you scroll down you'll see a new um, custom alpha. In this case it is our displacement map for our uh, tentacle here. So go up to the alpha button at the top left screen. Now, uh, first thing to do is to click the flip V button. Uh, ZBrush, um, for some reason, uh, when it generates maps, tends to flip them um, in the vertical once. And so now you'll see if you can see it on the screen. This uh, Once we flip it vertically again, um, it matches our uh, UV layout. If you forget this, uh, XSI does have an option when importing displacement maps to flip the um, image vertically, but might as well do it here and have it right when we export it. I tend to click the uh, Max button. This uh, gives a little more punch to your displacement map. Um, and so in case you're having problems, you might try that. If it uh, overdrives your displacement, you might turn this off. Uh, for now, we're going to turn it on and now we'll go ahead and export this file. Uh, I tend to use TIFFs. PSDs uh, seem to cause problems when I've used them in XSI for displacement, so I like to use TIFFs. One note I've encountered when uh, ZBrush is under a heavy load, occasionally even if I select the TIFF format, I will get a PSD instead. So if you're working and you thought you exported a number of TIFFs and you only find PSDs, there you have it. So we'll call this the Tentacle Displacement Map 01 and we'll go ahead and save this. And once that's done, um, oh, before you forget, you'll want to look at the very bottom of the screen, you'll see a alpha depth factor. Now, this is the amount of displacement uh, your uh, displacement map um, is telling uh, whatever program you use, in this case XSI, the amount of displacement total, both positive and negative combined. So in this case, uh, the number is 3.2698. So write that down or use it uh, when you export it. You might Some people include uh, that information in the name of the displacement file so they'll remember it. So let's go ahead and jump into uh, XSI. Um, I've gone ahead and hid our original mesh. You can see that right here. Uh, this is what we started with. We'll hide that and we'll go to uh, File, Import, OBJ file. Uh, we will click on our in our Models tab and there is Tentacle ZBrush Created 01. That's what we just created in ZBrush. And in the Displacement options, it wants an image. So we'll point that to our Displacement map. Um, we don't need to flip uh, the image vertically, so don't check that unless you forgot to do it in ZBrush. We will click View Dependent Refinement and leave the subdivision level to 1. That will help XSI displace um, uh, when we come to rendering. For the alpha depth factor, this is where you enter the number you wrote down from ZBrush, 3.2698. And it will uh, divide that number in half and use that in our render tree, and I'll show you that. Um, so go ahead and click OK. And first thing you may notice is that when you import this object, it's dark. It's not responding to the light as it should. And if you try to select polygons, you'll notice that the normals have been flipped. So go ahead and select all the polys and select invert polygons. So now it's responding as normal. Um, so let's go ahead and bring up our render tree. And let's go ahead and bring up uh, the objects geometric, or sorry, geometry approximation. Um, and we'll leave the OGL level the display level um, uh, to 1 and the render level to 1. That's the subdivided 1 in each case. For displacement, uh, you can see that the max displacement is half of our alpha depth factor. Uh, if you go down to the render tree and go to the SIB interp linear node, you will see that the, uh, the new range is a negative and positive number that match. That's simply the alpha depth factor divided in 2. So we'll leave that as is for now, and we'll see how this turns out. Uh, one thing to notice is that occasionally the alpha depth factor for me has been way off, either far too much or far too little. So I usually, if that doesn't work, I'll start with a max displacement of 0.25, um, a new range of negative 0.25, and a new range of positive 0.25 uh, for new range start and end, and see where that gets you. Uh, if, if you're 
uh, displacement map looks way off, don't be afraid to explore a little bit with these numbers. So now that that's here, uh, let's go ahead and take a render and we'll see what happens. So, okay, here we see that uh, for some reason, as I mentioned uh, earlier, we have uh, these sunbursts on this side of our tentacle, which they should be on this side. We should have veins here. So in this case, um, I'm going to scale this in the uh, negative z-axis for this, in this case, uh, and that just flips it around. And now when we uh, render, we should get um, a delightful uh, vein layout. And there we have it you can see there are our veins. Now, um, in ZBrush, I didn't create a great deal of, of fine detail. So if we take a render of this, if for some reason you're not getting those fine details, the wrinkles, the pores of skin uh, to come out, what you want to do is come to your subdivision limit recursive step and just increase that to five or six uh, to really make those fine details stay, stand out. It will increase your render times, but uh, is worth it if you're looking at those really, really fine details out. So uh, yeah, so there you have it. We've just created, and uh, one thing you might want to check is that you can zoom in on your um, mesh. I usually go to a side view, and I just like to check to make sure that the displacement map isn't coming too far above uh, my geometry. Um, in this case, it's not too bad because if you're animating uh, this geometry and the displacement map was coming up uh, far higher, you definitely might have a problem when trying to uh, lay out the animation for your scene. Uh, in this case, um, this isn't too bad at all. So there you have it. Um, nothing else I can really think of. Uh, you can see that it's working pretty well here. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed uh, going over this um, tutorial. I enjoyed uh, sharing what I've learned in the last few days about XSI and ZBrush integration. And uh, yeah, I hope to do some more of these tutorials uh, as time goes along. And I hope it's helped out uh, for your workflow. So uh, yes, thank you very much. Oh, and one last note. Uh, if you ever do want to check and see how this compares, you can always go into ZBrush and uh, export the high model resolution or some subdivision thereof and then import that into XSI and do a compare and contrast to see how your settings are um, for your displacement map. So thank you very much and uh, yeah, see you around.